San Francisco. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube. Covering VMworld 2015. Brought to you by VMworld and its ecosystem sponsors. Now your host, Stu Miniman and Brian Gracely. Hi, welcome back to theCUBE. I'm Stu Miniman with Wikibon. Uh, my co-host for this segment and also part of the panel is Brian Gracely. This is the director set in Moscone North. Uh, mixing it up a little bit. We're doing a bunch of panels here on Tuesday and Wednesday. And our guest for the first panel we're doing uh, can actually teach us a bunch about doing panels. So we've got Alistair Kroll and Cody Bunch uh, representing the V Brown Bag Group, uh, which is you know, regulars for anybody that have attended VMware uh, shows, uh, you know, VMUGs, a lot Lots of industry events. Uh, Alistair and Cody, thank you for joining us, guys. Absolutely, a thank pleasure. You. Thanks for uh, inviting us on. All right, so, uh, you know, We've always, you know, we, you, I've known you guys for a bunch of years, and we've talked. We have uh, kind of parallel missions in the industry. We're both involved in kind of educating, explaining, working. Um, you know, our, our audiences are a little bit different. Uh, you know, we, we've done a couple of shows in jeans, but uh, you know, you, you guys tend to get a little bit deeper into the technology than we have time, even when we do kind of our half hour, 45 minute segments, even though Pat Gelser is coming on and he tends to go, uh, go pretty hard and, uh, you know, deep into some of the technologies. But, uh, Maybe guys, if we could start out, just to, to tell us a little bit about uh, you know, V Brown Bag uh, and uh, you know, your, your experiences there. You want to cover? Oh, so you're, you're looking at me now. Oh, I this. can cover this one. Uh, so V Brown Bag is, uh, fundamentally the idea is that the community of people who use the VMware products are the best people to teach each other about how the products work, rather than getting all of the marketing story of how it's supposed to work. We're about sharing and spreading the story of how it actually works. Fundamentally, we start with a video podcast, a weekly video podcast that is helping one another to study for certification and initially just certification around VMware products. But as we started to cover all of VMware certifications, we then realized that our, our audience, our um, community needed to know more than just VMware. And so we started covering Cisco and storage and general automation using non-VMware tools and trying to help our uh, engineers who are working with the VMware products become more rounded engineers and giving them that content that they consume in their own time and for free, and yet is all generated by other members of the community. And it kind of reflects something that I as a trainer learned on the, the first couple of weeks when I started teaching was that another trainer told me, when you're out there in, in front of a classroom, the knowledge is already in the classroom. You don't have to necessarily be the source of that knowledge. And I found through the V Brown Bag, the knowledge is always out there in your audience. It's just a matter of teasing it out of them. Yeah, uh, yeah, it, it, it's interesting. Back, you know, I, I spent years working in the vendor community, so I'd been involved in, you know, white papers and whiteboards, and you know, uh, you know, supported the educational groups, uh, you know, many times, and uh, you know, started out blogging myself and, and participated in it. Um, you know, Cody, maybe you know, you're heavily involved in the open source community. Um, you know, the whole. Yeah, who oh. documents it, uh, you're more than involved. So, you know, you're making it happen. So, uh, you know, what's your viewpoint on this? Is, you know, how, how's education changing? How, how does the community uh, participation, uh, both people creating it and, and educating, uh, been changed in the last few years? I, Does that make sense, or? <laughs> it's, a, it's a very, very long question. Yeah. It's essentially, how, how have things grown up over the past couple of years or so? So, I mean, uh, how, how do you view, uh, you know, kind of in the, the open source, you know, era education, I guess? I really don't have an answer to that. I, I, one of the things I see is that the, the whole basis of the open source is that everybody who uses and contributes to that is part of a community. So the idea of community-generated knowledge is inherent in open source, but it's totally foreign to commercial software. And I think that's one of the things we're seeing is that because more commercial organizations are using more open source and relying on it, that they're having to come to terms with the, the fact that the best content is actually generated not by the person who, who is trying to sell you something, but by the people who have built it. And for open source, it's the, the developers, the teams that are building that, and the, things like the, the cookbook, which is what you're alluding to, that Cody's been involved <laughs> in book sprints on cookbooks. Uh, that content doesn't come from some vendor somewhere. It's a group of enthusiastic people using the software that create the best content. Yeah, I think he framed the question up uh, better than I did. So okay. uh, maybe, maybe you want to comment on that, Cody? <laughs> so that's, that, that is an entirely different, which is um, it is a, a much more community-driven uh, effort all around. Uh, software development, education, documentation, all of it is, is very 
grassroots. You will have your corporate sponsors, your Red Hats, and your Rack Spaces that show up and, and dump a ton of money into it and a ton of effort into getting things developed. But it's all with the mind of continuing for the better good of the, the software project as a whole. Yeah, I, I mean, one of the challenges with software always is how much time gets spent in development and then is, you know, is documentation an afterthought? Is education something we, we do or do you just throw it over the wall and say, you know, hey, uh, you know, Good luck. And so in the in the open source space, the there is no there is nowhere over the wall to throw it. The right. guys uh, implementing this are also the ones writing the code a lot of times. Maybe not directly, but uh, very closely related to. Yeah. So years ago, you know, a lot of us been coming to VMworld for a long time. Um, you know, it used to very much be it's kind of VMware's message. At one point, you guys uh, would host the VM the V Brown Bag events, but they had to be sort of off-premise, if you will, or you know, they had to be outside of the of the four walls. You're now downstairs. You're in the hang space. You're sort of like an integrated part of the, the VMware fabric. Like, how has uh, you know sort of this, the, the community-driven efforts that, that you guys are doing? Uh, how's that changed? What's the relationship with VMware changed? How much do they leeway do they give you to uh, you know help shape the community, teach the community, all those things? Well, this is our fourth year actually being in the hang space with the support of the VMware communities team. Yeah. And the communities team, I think, have been learning over that time how to work with us, how to enable us and not try and, and shield us from the people who would like to control. Because always there's marketing people who want to control a message, and we simply won't let the message be that controlled. Yeah. Yeah. So over the years, we've seen less and less of the uh, p people outside of the communities team having any kind of influence back towards us. It yeah. still happens a little. We, we, you yeah, know, every year sure. we have some little bite that, that occurs, but they've gotten very good at just letting us run everything. And uh, I think uh, last year was the first year where they just handed control of the stage and said, you run the schedule. Uh, we'll let you know if we need to book something in, but we're booking it in with you rather than us booking in with them. We just have our stage and we run it. It's now all presented by V Brown Bag, and we're very pleased to see that we are uh, the lead for that, for that space and that VMware have embraced having the community doing that. And yeah. I think one of the changes I've seen over the last two years I with VMware is the, um, the change to embracing more open source. I really didn't expect what we saw last year when they started open source some of their products and some idea that that is a good thing for them to do. It's a complete turnaround from what we saw in the past. Yeah, so, so one of the things uh, you know, we, we've talked a little bit is you know, building a schedule for something like this, boy, it's, it's a lot of work. And boy, you're juggling a lot of pressures is you know, if you've got sponsors, how much are they involved? The, the community, the, which topics are you going to cover? Which are the ones that everybody wants to go into and which are the ones that you know, are important that we cover? So maybe give us a little bit of insight as to you know, how you built the schedule this week. You know, what, what are the things? <laughs> that you hear from the community that's exciting and uh, you know anything that surprised, uh, surprised you that you might be willing to share. That's, that's, a, that's a largely a cat herding exercise right there. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's yeah. why we wear long sleeves here yeah. to, so you can't see all this, the scratch yeah. marks that we've gone through. Um, generally about a week, week and a half after the, the session acceptance announcements have gone out, we go ahead and open up a Google form that says, uh, you know, we are running the Tech Talks again. If you're going to be at, uh, at VMworld and would like to present your thing and can consolidate your message down into a good 10, 12 minute window, um, we can get you taken care of. And then from there, you know, 100, 200, 300 responses uh, ago. Well, for, for VMworld, we typically see around 60 sessions proposed and we have space for somewhere around 40 in our schedule. Uh, we see you guys at 60. OpenStack Summit. OpenStack Summit is amazing for us because the organizers firstly <coughs> invited us to come in rather than saw that something was going to happen and, and accommodated it. They invited us and when that email goes out to their session saying thank you for your proposal but we can't accept it, our sign up URL that Cody mentioned is actually in that email. And so we get 100 and 110, I'm expecting 120 for Tokyo proposed, far more sessions than we can fit for OpenStack Summit. So it, it then becomes that cat herding of who's going to turn up, uh, who's proposed lots of sessions, and I can only, only give each speaker one because we try to be very inclusive. Yeah. What's the, I mean, you guys cover a ton of topics. I mean, there's a ton of VMware topics. You're covering, you're covering OpenStack. I mean, you've done couch to OpenStack, so beginners to advanced stuff. You've done a lot of automation. What are you hearing from people? Like, what's the big things that people want you to do more of, or what are you seeing more people show up uh, to listen to and learn maybe over the last year, year and a half? Um, certification tracks are always really big. So uh, anytime VMware or Cisco announces a new certification or an update to 
Um, there's a whole lot of demand around that. Yeah. Um, we generally try to stay out in front. Uh, normally somebody with the, uh, on the brown bag team is in on one of their betas and we can, within reason, uh, start preparing a lineup of speakers to get that going. Certification tracks are always big. Um, there's been some mumblings around uh, Docker networking, containerization, microservices, really figuring out what that means. And um, like we recently kicked off a DevOps series that was fairly well attended as well, so. Yeah, so you yeah. guys are staying, you're staying on it and then people kind of kind of gravitate towards it as, as it makes sense to them or good yeah. for their job. And we, yeah. we try to be, the, the, be out in front of where our audience needs to be once we have that that content together. So it may take us two or three months to cover a particular subject area because we're doing one hour at a time every week. And so we want to have that content all together and, and cohesive when somebody comes in yeah. six months later and says, well, now I, I heard that this was going to be important. Now it really is, so I need, I need that content mm -hmm. this week. Yeah, yeah. so uh, one of the things I think is kind of interesting, you know, Brian and I have talked many times about it is just, you know, the career development type aspects. And you guys help foster the community and get people that want to learn about new technologies and help others to do that. Can you maybe talk a little bit about that? Sure. I mean, one of the things I, I see is particularly the people who are contributing to us. So all of the content that we get is from grassroots people doing contribution. That can be extremely good for careers. We often lose contributors because they're no longer working for some small company somewhere. They started showing their face out there, they're showing that they can communicate, and they get snapped up by vendors, and then it's much harder for them to be coming out and doing the, the community stuff. So we have this constant cycle of people moving upwards, assisted by V Brown Bag, but by their own presence on it. But in terms of career development, if you're not standing, if you're standing still in our industry, then you're going backwards at a very fast pace. And so yeah. we, we do try to be that looking forwards, and we, we take a lot of guidance from other forward-looking people in our industry. People like Scott Lowe, you always look at where he's, he's showing some interest because as an engineer, you want to be in that space at least no more than 12 months from now because it's going to be important. How about you, Cody? How did you see it? That's actually a very good piece. And then we've very recently been trying to branch out into the non-technical career development path as well. So as some of these people that have gotten snatched up by vendors, uh, they find themselves extracted from a, hey, I was the engineer, I reset passwords and, and built VMs and so forth, and in a, oh my god, I need to propose a project or product or whatever, and I'm pitching to a CXO, and they speak an entirely different language. So we're trying to, to help folks with that level of the, uh, the transition as well. We've got some great content coming up toward the end of this year, beginning of uh, 2016. All right, so I, I'm curious, uh, you know, all the big vendors have big education arms, and you know, some of the things you're talking about, you know, certifications in, in not just the traditional kind of CCIE, you know, uh, VMware certifieds, but, you know, cloud architect certifications, mm -hmm. you know, DevOps, you know, I don't know, we've got certification classes yet, but uh, do you guys have interactions with some of the other kind of ed services, uh, you know, groups out there, or, you know, wh how's that interaction go? On and off. Our, our core over the past bunch of years has been VMware Technologies. So uh, our core audience comes to us for information around VMware Technologies. Um, 2013, we started branching out into the OpenStack world. Um, we're, we're, you know, building a brand takes time to, to get inertia, get awareness, get, get folks really on board with what you're trying to do. Um, we've had to adapt some for the OpenStack folks and, and they've accepted us into their world. Um, and we're trying to do that in a, a couple of other spaces, but still early days. Yeah, and the, the challenge is that a lot of the commercial software organizations see education as a profit center and that we're a competitor to the profit center. So education has an edgy relationship with us. Certification absolutely loves us because we help to convert the people who have been to the paid training into the people who hold the certification. and that that transition, that, that conversion is for the certification team is one of the big challenges. Lots of people attend the course, but not many go on and do the cert, and we help bridge that gap for them. Yeah, it reminds me of the conversation we have about software these days, is, you know, there's a lot of competition with free. It's, you mm -hmm. know, the developers are going to find th things that are available. Uh, you know, how do you keep finding, I mean, you talked about that funnel of people, um, and that, that dynamic of, well, somebody needs to pay for some of it, um, but, you know, you're giving away, you know, it, it, it's funny because all of our content is free to consume. There is yeah. nothing to, that you have to pay to consume. Everything we do is funded by our, our awesome sponsors, and we find that uh, it's 
it is a cat herding thing around getting the content in. That's one of the pieces. And we have an expert cat herder in Jonathan Frappier who makes sure that the US catalog, and yes, so as, yes. as Cody says, we've got catalog out to next year, and that's entirely down to Jonathan, who does an awesome job. Uh, but then the other side is I'm the cat herder for the sponsors. And what I have found is that there are sponsors who understand community contribution who will just say, you guys are awesome and we'd like to bask in the reflected gl the glory. Uh, and then there are people who don't quite get it so much and, and they'll sponsor just the once with you. Right. So obviously anybody can, can watch the videos, uh, jump on the, the weekly call that gets recorded as a podcast and all that. What are some of the other ways people can get involved, whether they're kind of cool side projects or just making contributions? What's a lot of times people don't know what's the first step they should do or what's a, what's a good second step. So the, the, the first step for everyone past me in the brown bag crew has just been reach out to me. And yep. uh, so like we weren't on iTunes, Nick Marshall reached out and said, hey, you should be on iTunes. And suddenly he's now the, the iTunes marshaller, right? Uh, Al reached out and wanted to get involved in something, and now Al is... Yeah, that, uh, that's not quite accurate. Somebody else reached out and volunteered me. Well, yes. <laughs> so raise your hand, but not that high sometimes. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, like, if you want to get involved in contributing, presenting, um, shoot a DM to, uh, or a, a tweet to Brown Bag, or just reach out to us while we're on the uh, show floor here. Yeah. Um, um, we, we had that today, uh, yesterday. We actually had a, a chap who's been a con long-time consumer of our content, follows, follows us on Twitter. He came up and said, hey, I'd like to contribute. He's now, yesterday, during the day, was scheduled up to take part in and co-host a couple of shows and then yep. scheduled in to be a, an actual live host. So we absolutely we love to have new people coming in. The fundamental thing is being the presenters who come and generate the content and then coming to the inside to be in the crew who, who make it actually happen. Yeah. But we, we know that people coming in as the crew will pass out because they move on to other roles. We've had people yeah. who are now part of our family but are no longer sitting down to dinner with us when we're making these videos. They're, yeah. they're still yeah. our, you know, we still see them regularly, but they're not actively making stuff with us. All right, so, so guys, we're about halfway into you know, VMworld 2015. I want to get your initial impressions. Uh, you know, anything you know, different from a technology standpoint, community standpoint, you know, buzz, feel of the show, the, 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 that's worth noting. The, uh, the, the dancing app buttons were a little, uh, were a little exciting. <laughs> that was the best thing you've seen so far? I missed the morning keynotes this morning. I'm dealing with uh, travel flu, so. Keep, keep looking that way, please. You've been busy working, Cody, is what you're saying. Busy, busy working. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, I, I else saw a little more of the same message that we had last year. So it, it seems to be a little more of the messages being delivered on. And historically, that's what VMware does. They message what they're going to do long before they're actually doing it. I, um, this morning's keynote, I'm an EUC person. So this morning's keynote was interesting. And I hope they're now delivering what they said they were delivering last year because I've done real implementations of some of the products and the, the seamless integration has had significant seams when I was doing this six months ago. Uh, but that was because uh, this is a whole heap of acquisitions that have to be glued together and it takes time to take away those seams and get the, the meshing. Yeah. So uh, I'm hoping that that's, that's what's actually turning out. Okay, so uh, yesterday's keynote, if you, if you didn't catch it, there's a lot of discussion of that cloud thing. Um, cloud. You know, so cloud, 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 cloud. Um, Pete brag. I mean, the, the virtualization, you're doing OpenStack. Well, what, what about the public cloud? So uh, um, we, we did a month, month and a half long series on Google Cloud. Um, we've got AWS penned up or lined up for the, the end of the year. We've got some Microsoft content also in the pipeline. So. We are, we are expanding out into various flavors of cloud. Excellent. Yeah, and depending upon what you mean by the cloud, you have a very different constituent audience. That's, I, I, a little while ago, I did my due diligence and went on some of the AWS training, and it was just a completely different story and, and space to all of the things that I, as a VMware trainer, had been teaching for eight years beforehand. It's, it was clearly written for a different audience, not an infrastructure audience. And that's one of the challenges VMware has. If they want to actually play in that cloud space, they need to be talking to a whole other group of people. Yeah, um, it, it is. We, we've done some research on this. The skill set is very different. I mean, there, once there, it's there up and running, overlap. you know, um, it's not like we can't cross train yeah. them or understand it. But um, yeah, and the discussion we've been having in hybrid cloud is there's a lot of people that were doing AWS and now want to pull it back on site, and they don't, you know, 
they don't want to be configuring LUNs or you know, you know, setting up VLANs. I mean, they they don't want to do any of that. Yeah. So th there is this shift uh, that, that, that's happening and uh, yeah. a lot of retraining. I, I think there's there's a lot of this in what Brian does with the Cloudcast. That there's a whole heap of other ways of thinking about things and working with things that is absolutely essential if you're going to do going to be in the DevOps space. Yeah. That is not where the conventional VMware administrator architect thinks no, about. It's, it's a it's a different language. It's a different different skill set, but it's, but it's just, it ends up being different priorities. They got different goals, and, and um, but yeah, it takes, you're right, it's not, the, 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 the conversation about just change your skills, I don't know, is always necessarily relevant. You can grow them, you can improve them, but um, you, you know, the, the really different disciplines, it's hard to just kind of flip flop It's them. the kind of Venn diagrams of, of skill sets, and I was right. thinking about it yesterday, that it's not the usual two-dimensional Venn diagram. You're getting yeah. to a sort of 16-dimensional <laughs> Venn diagram of, of I'm, yeah. I'm a little bit of a developer, but I, I do this configuration management piece, but I understand VLANs, but not LUNs. Right. Uh, those kinds of challenges of meshing together the different skill sets, I don't think we'll see this DevOps takes over all of operations that I think we were hearing last year was going to happen. I think we're a little more mature and we realize that it's actually a, 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 an interaction between the two yes. sets of teams rather than a replacement. Yep. Right. So you guys serve the community, you, you take from the community. What, what are, personally, what are you guys passionate about? Like, or what, what are you excited about? What, whether it's, you know, came out of, out of this week or something else you're working on, what are you guys kind of personally passionate about right now? Technology-wise, um, hmm. I, I think to a certain extent it's past the, the early in your, your career. I feel like you, the, the technology change is new and it's exciting for its own sake. And that as as you see the cycles of change and, and ten years later the same words about we're getting eighty percent keeping the lights on, twenty percent to actually innovate, and that's apparently something new, even though I heard it ten years ago. Uh, <laughs> you, you it it hasn't that changed happen. in the last ten years. I mean, Alistair, that's one of the problems, right? I mean, you know, talked about all this great utilization we got. So that the solutions that we had for this ten years ago didn't do anything. I wonder if I'm cynical about the solutions we have now. <laughs> uh, so for me, the thing that, that excites me, the thing that makes me absolutely love spending a week here at VMworld and, and going to most of the other conferences, actually the people that I come and hang out with. So hanging out with, with Stu and Cody and but yes. don't hang out with Brian for nearly enough beers. Yeah. Uh, but talking to really interesting people who, who have good opinions about what's happening in the, the industry, that's actually the, the highlight for me of coming here. The, the learning about an individual piece of tech, that doesn't happen here. I do that back in, in my lab, but it's, it's being exposed to other people's thinking that is really <coughs> important to coming to the in-person events. Um, yeah, so just uh, the last question I have for you guys is the virtualization community, what I love about it over the last decade is uh, there were those people that contributed, those people that you know were exciting to kind of ride this wave and push this change. Um, and my fear is that as some of these new changes are coming, the ones that said, well, I built this and therefore I want to hold on to it. And are they ready to you know, understand that some things are changing? And I'm not saying virtualization's going away or anything's happening fast, but uh, you know, how many of them are going to be ready for that next change? And it's a challenge because we know the only thing that's uh, you know, constant in this industry is it keeps changing faster. I mean, if you, if you keep the feelers out there, if, you squ if, if you're skimming Twitter and so on, you can spot the folks that that like they rode the first wave, they got up onto the crest, they saw where the next wave was going to be, and they're already attempting to start riding that next wave. So yeah. there's, there's, there's a lot of folks that are already making that transition through. But there will be people who are going to be the mainframe engineers of, of our generation who say, it's, it's a VM and VMs do everything and, and this modern application stuff is just, just rubbish. It's a poor way of doing things. Mm -hmm. Well, you're always you're always going to have the, the naysayers and the, the folks trying to drag I'm you back. The grumpy beard, the grumpy old man beard. So uh, well, they, they... I, yes, I've I've had the grumpy old man beard for for ages now, um, and you know if if they try to hang on too much, you know like like Blockbuster tried to hang on too much, right? Things, you you will be out innovated, you'll be outperformed or outmaneuvered. You know, it's a it's an interesting little chess game. Yeah, right? and the the ongoing phrase of if if you don't like change, you're going to like irrelevance even less. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Technology venues, if, if you're not uh, you know, setting the table, you might be on the menu, mm -hmm. right? So, all right, well, Alistair and Cody, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, people want to find out more, participate, everything. Uh, where, where, where should they go? ProfessionalVMware.com or VBrownBag.com. All right, well, gentlemen, thanks so much. Uh, Brian, thanks for joining me for this segment. Absolutely. We'll be back with lots more coverage here from VMworld 2015. Thanks for watching. <laughs>